Today, I had the pleasure of waking up to the best news, and it made me really happy. The enthusiasm in my voice is very palpable, yes, I know. So, Konami just confirmed that Moon of the Cool Sky, aka Baby Goddess, is confirmed as an OCG import in Infinite Forbidden. Why? No, seriously, this format is already hell. Why make it worse? Now I can already imagine how some of y'all are interpreting this. Wow, these guys are really complaining about a Link 2 monster that allows you to use an opponent's monster for Link 5? Uh, no. Moon of the Close Sky could have been a non-effect monster and it still would have been one of the best cards in the game. Very similar to how Sunsea Genius is really broken for its properties, obviously not for its effect. You turn it into the Link 1 and then full plan combo from there. Well, guess what? We basically have the same thing now, but generically, and it opens up a sea of possibilities. All you gotta do is link two effect monsters into the baby goddess, and then link her off into the fiendsmith link one, and then tribute that to summon the fiendsmith from the deck, and then link it off with any other monster to summon the link two monster, then use the link two monster to fuse for Lacrimosa using the baby goddess and the fiendsmith link one from your graveyard, and then the Lacrimosa revives back the fiendsmith, so now you got the link two, and then two level six monsters on the field. You could make a Link 4 at this point using all of your monsters, or go for, I don't know, rank 6 like the Caesar or Beatrice. Bro, how is Beatrice still in the game? Oh, and there's so many things you could do there. So you could overlay for Beatrice and then send Snake Eye Ash, and then link off the Beatrice and the Fiendsmith Link 2 monster, and then go for the Princess and then revive back the Snake Eye Ash, which would be full Snake Eye's combo using just three generic bodies, by the way. Or you could also send Samsara D Lotus and then link off the Beatrice and the Link 2 in order to make the Muckraker and then revive back the Samsara and then go full Ubel combo. You could also send Angel Blue Tears, which would banish itself from the grave in order to set any normal trap from your deck whenever effect damage is inflicted. Thank you, Lacrimosa, for randomly burning 1200 damage for no good reason. Because yes, every deck now gets a Gagaga -ga -ga Cowboy, which is exactly what Yu Gi Oh needed. You don't need to draw anything specific to bring your opponent. No, no, no. Just random bodies and you got it. Oh, and on top of getting any floodgate in the game, for sure. Beautiful. All right, so you can turn a bunch of random bodies into pretty much anything you desire. Reminds you of something? Yeah, so it's basically Orcus 2.0, but instead of playing the bad cards, well, you're, you're really just playing good cards. The only quote-unquote brick that you gotta play is Fabled Lurie, but it's not even a Garnet, it's just Attack at Tumborg. If you draw Fabled Lurie with pretty much any of the Fiendsmith engine cards, you're just discarding the Lurie and then searching the Fiendsmith, so it really ends up being the same. And I wanna say this is the best engine in terms of ratio of good cards to bad cards because you play three copies of the Fiendsmith and then one to three copies of the spell card and only one Lurie. So you can have like six good cards to only one bad card. So this is unlike the previous engines that were really good historically, like the Brilliant Fusion engine, which had three good cards and then one to two actual Garnets, or the Red Ice Fusion engine, which had one Garnet and then two Tacketumborgs. I'd even go as far as to say that you are absolutely crazy if you're not playing the Fiendsmith engine in your deck. Well, that or maybe you're broke. Welcome to my life. Seriously though, this engine is miles ahead of anything else that you could splash in your deck and the absolute last thing we needed was generic access to it. It was already super powerful before, but now everyone and their mother can access it. That's gonna create an environment where everybody has to play like 18 hand shops to stop each other from getting to their floodgate. Again, we can thank Beatrice for that. It's not even like you can blame Snake Eyes at this point because I think there's like five decks that can literally do the exact same thing using the Fiendsmith engine. And also there's a bunch of combos that used to be dog shit that only made like one or two or three interruptions that can make double the amount just because of the Fiendsmith engine. Okay, I'm not gonna give actual examples because I don't want to promote this, but uh, you get the point. Just trust me on this one, bro. I think the better thing Konami could have done was either give us a balance before in order to nerf the currently existing decks, or print the baby goddess right after all the WCQ so that we don't have to deal with a tier negative one format. No, because seriously, that's what it's gonna be. This is already a tier 0 format as it is, things are just gonna get worse. I am not looking forward to Nats. And I can't wait to see how many people are willing to sell their kidneys for a playset of the Fiendsmith and the Baby Goddess. It's gonna be a lot of money, so uh, good luck, you'll need it. Anyways, that's all I had for this video, guys. Let me know how you feel about the Baby Goddess in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.